For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. So to take some of the points you're talking about, like you mentioned, there's a two-thirds majority in the federal parliament, uh, six out of the seven provinces, again, there's an absolute majority. So, and even in the local provincial bodies. At the same time, like you said, there's the issue of the notion of development that the global financial institutions present in terms of aid and other concepts like that. So keeping all these things in mind, how, what do you see as uh, the core principles of, uh, say, of development in the context of bringing socialism to Nepal in a very concrete sense, for instance, in a field like education or health? How do you see the process that is happening now and how do you see it moving forward? That is the main issue of debate today in our party and society. What we are feeling is that our party had to initiate a great debate on what we should do at this historical juncture. But uh, that is not so much discussed and debated as it was necessary. The three things regarding our tactical goal of development are needed to be discussed and synthesized. One is, what is the model of development for us? Second is, how do you achieve that development? Third is, where do you go with that development? These are the three main issues that we have to be very clear. We are discussing, but discussion and debate are not much focused and emphasized. That's the matter of 42. For us, what do we think is that six components should be there in our new model of development. As I talk to you, that we have a new model of democracy. On the side by side, we have to have new model of development too. So that new model of development should incorporate at least six points, major points. One is, of course, growth, but inclusive economic growth. Second is social justice. Third is character of socialism orientation, socialism oriented development. Fourth is you have to use all the scientific techniques, technologies that has been developed, but that should be human focused, working class focused. Fifth is, it must be environment friendly. The sixth is, it must be sustainable. So these are the major characteristic, specific features of our new model of development that what we are talking of. So as far as constitution is concerned, it has already defined it has already incorporated the provision that education, health, employment, shelter, and food sovereignty are the fundamental rights of the citizen of Nepal. So we have already enacted the laws according to the provisional of the constitutions to implement these fundamental rights. So our development should incorporate these things. So without giving <coughs> shelter, food, education, health and employment, our development will not be the development as was expected and is expecting from the um, Nepalese people are expecting today. So this is what we are thinking. So, Western model of development, that is just economic growth, which will widen the gap between rich and poor, and which will widen the gap between um, urban center and the rural society, 
which will widen the gap between mental um, worker and the physical labor. So that is, that is not what we have to follow. So we have to be very clear. That is what we are discussing. But what I personally feel is that our discussion is not sufficient. We have to have a vigorous discussion on it because we, if we fail to follow, to persuade the new model of development policy, then we'll, in the name of development, we'll go to the same in the, as in the result. We'll go to the same Western model of development, which is not the pave, pave the way for socialism. And with respect to China, of course, there is, especially in the last one, one and a half years, there's been a, both countries have also grown, grown closer, more discussions. So considering also China's, uh, say, trajectory in its attempts to build socialism, how does, the, how does the party here see that project and the relations between Nepal and China in that context also? So we do have good relations with our northern neighbor, China. Fortunately, we don't have any outstanding issues with China. China has always respected our national sovereignty and it has not uh, entered into our internal affairs. That is a very good approach China is pursuing. And also in bilateral cooperation, also China is trying to do what uh, they can do. But uh, what uh, we should do in this geopolitical scenario, we are very serious on it. There is great opportunity, big opportunity for the country like Nepal, that we are in between China and India, both developing economies in the world. We can take the opportunity from the development that are, has been going on in both the countries, particularly in China, but in general, uh, <clears throat> generally speaking, India is also going up in its economic parameters. But this is our great, great opportunity so that uh, we can take the opportunity and also because of the geopolitical um, position, international forces are also giving attention uh, to our country. And that can be also useful or utilized in Nepal's interest. But the, at the same time, it is not easy. To handle this geopolitical situation is not easy. See, if you missed, it can be very tragic, very harmful to us. So our challenge and responsibility to handle this very skillfully on the side of our national interest, of course not going against the interest of our any neighbor or the genuine mm, international mm, friends and communities. And one question quickly coming back to the party that you were talking about. In terms of uh, ideological, uh, the, the risk of ideological degeneration you were saying. And this is of course a common issue in the left across the world, especially in today's context. So as maybe as the single largest communist party in South Asia right now, what is uh, the party's approach to say, uh, say education and training of the left to actually resist some of these tendencies? What do you see as the way ahead? You see, we have just completed our unification process and it's very tragic that it took one year to unify our district committees, provincial committees and mass and class organizations. So that is why even the work division of our central committee member has not been already completed. We are still going to complete it. Let's hope that it will be completed very soon. So these issues of party school, 
party training classes are not well planned. But this should be on the top agenda, what we feel. So after we complete this unification process, organization unification process, after we make our political report public, after we give the responsibilities and assignment to of our Central Committee members and our cadres, we will make the plans for the party building in side by side with the functioning of the government. So in that process, ideological cultural movement should be the priority agenda of our party. So from this perspective, party school and training classes must be one of the top priority of the party. Let's hope that after a few days, when you complete this organizational unification process, we will go to discuss into that. Thank you, Governor. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching PBC Spanish.